皆さん、元気ですか私は、ダン・ザ・ウォフマン・シオド・オークミオトコです。Hi guys, Dan the Wolfman here, and I'm going to be breaking down Jesse and Cap for Steven Seagal 2. You guys like my first reaction video? And a lot of guys asked me to do on part two, so here it is. If you're not familiar with me, I have done martial arts my entire life, four black belts, fought pro in MMA, brown belt in Aikido, and uh, the guy that can make, actually make Aikido locks versus MMA and BJJ fighters in live grappling and a little bit in MMA uh, sparring and standing、uh, locks as well. So, Hopefully, you guys will enjoy this breakdown. Today is going to be a, bit, a little bit different. I'm going to show just a little bit footage of myself, starting here with just a little bit of footage of the keto locks and in some of the concepts Steven Seagal is trying to relay to Jesse and Cap and his、uh, brother Oliver. I'm going to show a little bit of footage of me doing very similar stuff, teaching the same concepts, using the same principles and concepts in sparring, something a lot of the lower level people make in comments. About these kind of things, really don't understand or have. You see a Cody Gishi take down a Juju Katami arm bar here, and I'm going to show just a little bit from my、um, Above the Law reboot video, and then we're going to get into Seagull and Jesse, and then I'll just put a little bit of footage sprinkled here and there. Now, so hopefully, you guys will like my MMA. Versus Keto, my Keto versus MMA video. Here's just a little bit of my、yeah. Buffalo Wild 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 video. So this is totally not. As Sensei Shigal narrates.、Yeah. Some techniques I thought you guys <laughs> might enjoy <laughs> playing with. Let's see if you want to add them. Well, I'm going to cut the way it's shot. Show the cup of the neck. Show. Ah, so that's it. <laughs> This cotton o g g i could be very well used by、uh, police forces, SWAT team, the church, the hospital, the press, the SIS, the SAS, things of that nature. In 1969, I was invited by a friend of mine to an American embassy party in Tokyo. While I was there, I met some crazy drunk guy named Nelson Fox. He recruited me into the CIA. I was 22 at the time. My eyes were about to be opened. And here we go. Just wanted to get that in there. The crazy drunk guy being boss r o o m I thought that could be interesting. Hope you guys liked it. So now let's get into Jesse and Sue. If you'll notice if I have my hands up and this goes to turn,、mm. it's bigger. Yes. And it, you know, it can get blocked easier. Yeah. Okay? And stand strong. Yep. Pay attention. You paying attention? Oliver, you、yep. sure? Yes, sir. Watch this. Okay, see, here's what's happening. It's going here and here because he's good, so he knows how to turn his toe in、mm. and he knows how to make it come here also. But it's also going into his shoulder. Right. Now, watch this. Yeah, completely different. <laughs> If I hit him like this, there's a lot of shock. Yeah. You know? But when I hit him like this,、mm. you can feel a different penetration. We're here. So, penetration, that's something very important that I talk about a lot、uh, in my Combative Street Jiu Jitsu DVD and in my seminar highlights. You can see me giving deep punches to people versus boxing punches and how, yes, Roques, Leo, they are very, very different. So, Um, I'm going to show a couple clips of talking about that and let's discuss that a bit because it's really interesting. He says, You can block this because it's wider, easier than you could block this, especially with gloves on. That makes a huge difference, especially big boxing gloves, let alone MMA training gloves.、Uh, big wider versus the vertical punch. Okay. If it's just bare fist, it's a minimal difference, but it's more from the line of attack. And especially if you learn to hide it from underneath the peripheral vision from a down upward angle. As、um, let me play a little video of my karate versus Wing Chun vertical punch versus boxing horizontal punch right here. Here's the cross, and here's the vertical punch. Look how close it's getting to the camera lens there. So when you really throw it, not only can you see the difference here. 
but when you really throw it, it's deceptively long. It is a longer punch. Now, it's hidden from underneath, and you use these top two knuckles that you typically use. Now, I use it from Southpaw a lot. Uh, Biodo and Chijo Machido, the three months I was with them at Black House. So guys, it is a very different punch. Now, watch me use it in sparring for a little bit here and better MMA versus uh, Sistema too. You're gonna see me use it and then we're gonna get back to Sensei Seagal, but I wanna convey even deeper stuff and who knows, maybe even Sensei Seagal watches his illegitimate Sunday and the Wolfman's videos to pick up stuff too. You never know. Or maybe uh, you all get it when you train your entire life in different martial arts and get multiple black belts with dedication, unlike all the keyboard warriors. Let's see me use it in sparring. Uh, after a couple seconds, I'll switch to sparring partner, pro MMA fighter, uh, Koji, Koji Ando, uh, 13 and seven. He fought for the one title. Pretty good boxer by Japanese standards, uh, MMA standards, especially. It was known as the big guy fight gym, and I guess I had changed when I showed up there. So I set out a few rounds, but I get a few good rounds here that we saw in this karate blitz there at the end there with a lot of kicks and punches, but not telegraphic, not winding up, that vertical punch there coming up from underneath. Important concepts, guys, to try and learn how I'm putting systemic concepts in here and giving pros difficult times, real, real good. This is a very good pro here. You see him... Versus other people, uh, his boxing messes a lot of people up. Even me, so, even me a bit two years earlier. Uh, double Suki punch. I should have looked that up first. I hope that's what it's called, Suki Mountain Punch. Um, but my distance control, my playing with his perception is messing with him. I'm landing. Distance control, playing with perception, Maya. Karate distance control, just staying outside. I just turned 40 this week, and I was trying to use less movement, because usually I'm a blitz off rhythm fighter, as I talked about in the first video, and I realized I'm getting older, my knee's getting worse, I just had knee surgery uh, last week, and now doing the reaction videos for a little while. But um, you gotta use that Maya, the distance control, and when you get older, like Sensei Seagal, and even myself, you're going to stand there for the attack, and then get off line and counter. All right, let's get back uh, to training with Sensei Seagull right now and see what he has to show Jesse and Oliver and Kemp next. Here, when we do this kind of thing, you can even do this. Mm. Now I've trapped his hands, okay? Mm. This is the kind of thing I want you to learn. Mm. Mm. So we're here, yep. we do this kind of thing, look at the hand again, look at the feet again. Mm. Yep. Now in my style, I would just take this and go into mm. yeah. You know something like that right. but you can't do that right but you'll still have both of his hands down yeah and from here you certainly can hit him mm. yes. you want to try so he was stepping in a trap now notice that he stepped on his foot for the trapping i talked about that in my first breakdown video he stepped on the foot something i did in the film real steel as the robot metro uh and i've used it a lot in sparring especially against like i used to mess up uh, make him frustrated, Fabricio Verdum, the times I've sparred Fabricio, much taller UFC heavyweight champion. I would switch to southpaw, step on his foot because he's so tall, 6'4", he's used to leaning back. I would triple jab, but the second and third jab would get him because I stapled his foot to the ground. So not only is Sensei Seagal doing that, he's coming in with a double trap. He's getting the UV Dory on the four fingers on the backhand. His left foot is on Jesse's right foot, and he's able then to sweep or showing Oliver. You could simply come in with a quick trap and and overhand or an elbow something like that something hopefully oliver can do in the future yeah this is being trapped exactly and don't think from here we can't hurt you mm. because from here we can do a really great mm. uppercut really mm. great punch in the yeah. face which i'm not hunting any in the face oh, yeah, i just want you to hand. feel yeah. what i can do do you have a certain type of footwork to so that was pretty good punch there to the chest. Guys, I like that punch, that vertical punch he does, and he did it above the law against the big guy uh, to drop him down. Uh, it's a surprising hit. I teach the Cobra punch a little bit different. I think even a little bit deeper, less for moving the guy, more for hurting the guy. The Cobra punch to the chest, and most people won't be able to see it. If a guy keeps coming at you, at you with that forward pressure, how to hit that Cobra punch, and then his body, you can basically play with him for a second while he's destabilized. You're destabilizing his inner soul and his structure and his spine and everything, and even big, tough guys, you'll see me do that 
uh, in different highlight videos and, and my Combat of the Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD. I'll show you how to do the slightly different Cobra Punch to uh, Indy, come your heart, to steal the guy's heart. <clears throat> and then he goes like this, and then you can grab his neck and throw him on the ground. Any kind of different ways you can do breaking structure takedowns. To achieve this? In to my footwork, it's always like a triangle, and I'm always sliding. Right. Uh, I don't do this thing that you guys are doing. Right. Jumping I, I don't, around. I don't, I don't no bouncing. do that ever. Yeah. I will just stand here. Mm. Mm. Stand here. Mm. Stand here. In your style, you're going to move. Right. As you're moving, don't jump around a lot. Mm. Don't do this stuff. Right. If you move, just move like this. Mm. And from here, take cool. your... Oh, is that karate? Is that Aikido? Or is that Wing Chun, Pop Punch? Except instead of the Wing Chun style vertical punch, as you learned in my video, he's doing the karate style vertical punch with these top two knuckles. Now, he's talking about the difference between sport and self-defense. Self-defense has to be there. Young kids on YouTube, you'll get old too. Father time is undefeated. I've been messed up since SWAT school for a year with my knee and the lifetime of MMA and all that. Finally had knee surgery. Hopefully I'll get better and back on the mats and able to do more. Um, hopefully you enjoy these videos as I bring you to them. But even for Oliver, he's showing you're moving. You're moving away from the hand. Seagal instinctively did that against the power hand because they're both southpaw. You could do that for my Ryu defense that even Diego Sanchez does, but that's a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But he did get hit much less using my Ryu defense and that kind of slow movement around the circle. So you could stand out there and he did get the angle of attack and then he's able to enter or remake. Take your shot. Yeah. Hmm. You notice how I waited for the right body yeah. position. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in boxing and karate, they'll say, get the right body position. Yeah. But they never say, get his right body position mm. and your body position yeah. together. So right. let's talk about kicks now. Okay. When you do my so body position, so we're talking about spatial relationships, guys. And a lot of what I do in my neo striking system is blitzing, off rhythm, switch punch uh, combos, switch stance combinations. You have to be a switch fighter, and um, drawing attack by drawing and getting that angle of attack. There's a lot of energy efficient takedowns there. Kazushi Waza, we've seen in the, a few times in the UFC. Getting that nice angle of attack. So even Oliver is saying you don't got to hop around like crazy like most MMA fighters do, but you could move slowly and stay just outside that Maya distance and then come in with your strikes. As you get older, this becomes even more important. As you saw me try to learn how to do in that MMA versus Sistema 2 video versus the uh, pro MMA fighters, I showed that clip uh, versus Honda. My Getty, for example. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, I'm good. So when you kick, yeah. this is sword. Uh, same when idea. Kick, yeah. This is sword. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Try that. Okay. And then yeah. mm. Wow. That's pretty That was a new one. Do you yeah. wanna try? You're way too late, Oliver. Okay. Now, that's interesting there. Um, that is one way of defending the kick. You could just double parry to the outside and hit. Uh, did some of that kind of stuff with Benny the Jet. Uh, one of the Dutch kickboxers had me move offline for that 2-3. You could do sometimes get to that outside gate against the rear front kick. But oftentimes there's not a lot of time, and you got to scoop back and pass it and then counter kick and things of like that. It's, it's um, hard to time it against skilled opponents to be able to uh, enter in on, a, on that dark side, uh, the blind side of the guy. It's easier to scoot and scoop with a double block, parry out and pass, and then counter kick, sometimes come inside. Interesting though, the Seagal went to the neck and he's going in here, guys. Feel, get, do some masochism right now. Not on the throat, between the throat and the muscles there, and go in, uh, curl in, in, and off. Oh, and feel that. Seagal in the first video is also doing that all the time too. But you see the end caps, they both went to the knee. And that is something I did 
In the video, Master Wong stole from me against front kick defense or round kick defense to takedowns. I showed how to catch that kick and I showed how to manipulate kind of like a, a rolling jet sow with a little bit more jet sow energy would be even better than what Jesse and Oliver did there. You, they're just kind of rolling it, but you, you kind of roll and move with that. It destabilizes the nervous system and you break their structure and take them down. Um, so it's interesting. They kind of did what I did. Uh, in my Ong Bok round kick defense video or Master Wong stole my round kick defense video. He's been liking my comments lately, even some from three years back. Master Wong, we gonna hang out? Wait till late. You gotta move in much sooner. Okay. Move in much sooner. No, you're standing back and waiting. Okay. Now, that's it. Uh, right. you're meeting him. Yeah, you can't stand back there. Steven Seagal still has that excellent Harimi or entering timing, just like GSP did with his double leg takedowns. Was that because of wrestling or was that because of his karate experience? Right, right, right. How would that work for uh, uh, Mawashigeri? So Mawashigeri, it's, there's a thousand ways to do it, but as you come... Right. Ah. Ooh, he punched his kneecap against Mawashigeri. Boom. It's nice that you see his other hand is up to defend from the kick punch, right? But here, and he punched the knee. Now, do I love that? We'll get to that in a second. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is one of the ones that I like. That was also a new one. Yeah. So, so as you come, really and I'm hitting you nicely without yes. nothing. Yes. To try to not But you hit you. the exact right spot both times. Yeah. Where, where did That precision is, is like right there. You can see it's already <laughs> starting to bruise. You see that? Yeah. yeah, right here. At the top of the kneecap. And I'm like not this. hitting him here. I'm just hitting him here so I don't hurt him. Because mm. if I were to hit you here, you'd be hurt. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. You can do this if you have very good precision. You've trained your whole life. Perhaps Seagal can. Perhaps Vladimir Vasilyev. Uh, perhaps George can. Uh, occasionally, maybe I can do something like that. But could most martial artists? Not so much. But it's an interesting thing to play with. I'm going to show a clip in a minute where I do something similar. Hey, and you got to feel that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so as you come to kick, I'll turn. You know, I'm covering this much distance. There are stupid people who are saying, you can never do that, this punch. Yeah. I've done it a thousand times. Yeah. Mm. And I just did it. Too. I guess it's like... Now, Rokas goes, yeah, he did it a thousand times against willing uh, partners. That's kind of true. How often have I pulled off cool, really cool things in um, sparring? Not that often, but sometimes, right? I've done some really cool, interesting kick defense stuff or my Lucy Sistema leg against a low kick, kicking through and then counter cut kicking the support leg out. Yeah, I've done it a few times. Does it happen all that time? No. So should it be your primary defense? I don't think so. Let me show a clip of something uh, similar, though, from my Sistema defense against high body and head kicks video. Right here, I show just a similar concept that I think is a little more practical. Boom, I can jam. Boom, I can block and come in. So you saw me jam in with a double forearm block, which is Dutch kickboxing style. You saw me come in with that double forearm block, Dutch kickboxing style, which I think is uh, more practical because you're there. Um, I especially like that against the left kick versus the right kick. Right kicks, I tend to cover block. Um, supported or in pass you know in palm and pass usually but uh left kicks left mid kicks left high kicks i will jam in here and then two three two often but you can jam in there and if you saw my forearm i could have done it with more spring energy my forearm hit in the same place as a knee plus my head is more protected i'm like trying to do the precision of the punch to the knee so you can use concepts and principles like that even with some of the fancy sauce stuff to get you thinking at least is it the primary defense you should do probably not or we'd see it in glory kickboxing all the time um but you can do um, something uh similar like with everything you just need to practice if you just try it out once of course you're not going to get it to work right you need to do it hundreds thousands of times and i like oliver seems like a nice guy i talk to him a lot on facebook he has a jovial attitude i hope he goes really far at his mma career it seems he seems like a good guy. Some guy I, I would like to hang out with, though he's quite a bit younger than me. He's a guy I would like to teach. 
um, to use kind of my switch stance neo striking stuff a bit more and some of this Maya stuff right on the outside and then going in directly. Um, two punch counter to the round kick that Machida taught me when I was his sparring partner for the first Bader fight. Things like that. There's a lot that I would like to see Oliver be able to do in the future. Yeah. Wow. Let's take a little break. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. In Okinawa and different parts of Japan, you'll hear karate masters say, karate begins with kata and ends with kata. Yeah. I don't believe that and I don't agree with that. No. My teachers told me, learn waza from the master. Yeah. Fight, yeah. perfect your waza, and go back to the master and learn more waza. So learn the technique, master it through fighting, sparring, and then get back. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of footage of Seagull other than guys running at him, but even then, he was very highly skilled in the 70s. I suggest you watch Path Beyond Thought if you're a naysayer. Yeah. I'm trying to spend 60, 70% giving you guys spirituality, philosophy, because the technique, even though you might be amazed or you might be interested, yeah. that's the, 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 not the most important thing. Yeah. My master used to say, little finger can make a big man cry. And what he meant by that is, you have really 10 weapons. Exactly, yeah. One time somebody pulled a knife on me and he said, okay, now what are you going to do? <clears throat> and I said, I have ten weapons, you have one. Mm -hmm. Because he was concentrating on this. Yeah. That was all he knew. Yeah. I was concentrating on one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, five, ten. Yeah. Not all? No, I don't know about that story. I call that... Uh interesting to convey a point that's more like a metaphor than a real story i hope uh because you're not going to really talk as a guy pulls a knife on you no what he's trying to convey though is that a guy with a knife or a stick or a weapon and i have faced weapons and multiple attackers before they overly focus on the weapon you need to too uh until and i teach that until you're able to attach to it like with a dog catcher or jaws to pass it to a russian two-on-one and now i have good control of it now occasionally you might be able to take the hand off to strike when they're distracted or they're so focused down here an eye jab to the eyes or a kick to the knee or a hidden underneath with a front leg kick to the groin is occasionally available in empty hand versus knife uh, type training so there is a point there about them over focusing on the weapon now you need to focus on edged weapons pointy things you do need to focus primarily on that weapon weapon hand uh, as well but sometimes they're so close you distract them with a headbutt or a bite or something that becomes available also the fingers are part of the hand so if we want to sever your spinal column we can hit you right there and I don't know where he got 10, 10 fingers, but then he won over his body. And if Muay Thai is the art of eight limb in, limbs, maybe uh, maybe left way is the art of nine limbs because you got feet, hands, uh, elbows, knees, and headbutts. So I'm not sure where the 10th one is. Uh, maybe that's that biting I talked about. And that's it. And we don't do that with the fingers. We do that. Really, we hit here. I don't know if the camera can see that. Yeah get it here and then here yeah and you notice when I do this it turns it into a very thin knife yep. when I do this it becomes thick so this is more like a blunt weapon and this is more sharp that's right yeah. that's yeah. exactly right weapon. you want to show mercy you do that yeah. mercy <laughs> is for after they're sleeping mercy is for the weak okay mm. yeah because yeah. 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 everybody's yeah. life is precious but when somebody steps outside of normal parameters of human behavior to the point where they become a danger to humanity, it's our job as Bugesha to neutralize. To be out for justice because they think they're above the law. Don't yeah. you agree? Yeah. So let's do little fingers now. Are you ready? Okay. Some of them may be hard to kill, but I'm going to mark them for death. Okay, yeah, okay. 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 You know, coming here like that. This mm. in the eyes. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Style. Or this. Or style. That was that was right on the spot. Yeah. Let's say Oliver is fighting mm -hmm. and he wants to try to use 
some of the finger techniques. My favorite would be to come here mm. and then here. Ooh. And then here. Harry, yeah. and this is a break. Yeah. This is a break. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's he's really finished here. Yeah. Yeah. Can you feel How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we, we do have, we do have him. Yeah, where, where are you here? We do have Kirill over here. Get to work. Get job. Go to work. Do your job, Kirill. So, he has his hands up here. I come into the eyes. I believe it's at Team Nogara Dubai, FY. Congrats to Monir, who I actually got him a little bit famous with one of his early head kicks. When I was in, uh, in Egypt, I was filming the TV, practicing my commentary before I commentated Pancrase Live on UFC Fight Pass when Monir got a couple head kick knockouts in a row. And now he just, I believe he won his fight by decision in the UFC uh, just recently. I believe he got that decision. I hope I'm right on that. I take this down yeah. here and yeah. bring yeah. this up into this. Yeah. This is called Sankyo. And if I want to break it, I snap it back yeah. very hard and fast and it's broken. Yes. Otherwise, I come into here. Yeah. I control him. Yeah. Or I come into here. Ah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So when we're here, any time like this, it's that down movement. Ah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Anytime his fingers are anywhere, anywhere. That's all I need. Yep. Guys do open their hands a lot. And sometimes you get one finger, you be dory. Sometimes it's just their thumb hanging out. I can get the thumb out of the air sometimes. You would try to- Don't do this. Don't do this. Okay. It's like sword. For most of you, that's more like if the guy's pointing. Well, if he points from two feet, three feet away distance, it's one thing. If he starts coming into my personal space, getting near my eye, I take that as a real threat. I don't want your dirty fingernail cut in my cornea give me an infection, you dirty, nasty people. Oh, okay. It's like sword. Uh, yes. Stand strong. Okay. <laughs> Can't do it very easily. Watch what happens when I back up and lead you. Mm. And I'm leading you into my knee or my foot to kick you. Mm. When you're here, stand strong. Yeah. Stand strong. You can see, even see me teaching that in my early combat jujitsu videos I discussed. Uh, in the other part one video in 2009 with a uh, cross wrist grab doing a knee kill, dragging him back, and then you can knee the face. Stand strong. Yeah. 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 And the cool thing is, this is legal in MMA. It is legal. It is. Nobody does it. It's yeah. Legal. Most of all, understand when I punch, for example, don't do this kind of thing. Big, yeah. Mm. Boom. Yeah, from your kid. When you watch a bird who sits... Unconnected punches versus uh, center line punches and hidden punches. Um, but even with your crosses and stuff, you want to have it more connected, kinetic cohesion through your body. Sitting there and he takes off. Do you see him go like this? Mm. You don't see True. nothing. Yeah. So this is how a good punch is. Mm. Just like a bird taking off into flight. Just do it direct. Everyone loads their shoulders and telegraphs, lift their elbows up, and they hunch their neck. You can just hit when you're relaxed. As you see, I was getting to in my later years in the sparring, uh, like I suggest you watch a MMA versus um, Sistema, Better Sistema versus MMA 2 video. I'm relaying a lot of karate concepts, systemic concepts. Martial arts is martial arts stuff, the style over style stuff. It's about the concepts and principles that these lower level people on YouTube simply don't understand. And they don't have the MMA sparring for years like I do, or the real world bouncing experience like I do, or my friend uh, Remy, this one goes out to you, subscribe to Martial Arts One-on-One -on -one for some functional Aikido. He should hopefully, uh, you know, be safe and start doing functional Aikido type seminars in the future, unlike that horrible one we saw at Jesse's by that blue belt guy. Immediate. Yeah. Just yeah. Give it, it's effortless. Yes. You don't see it. Yep. Yes. One minute he's here, the next minute he's in the air. Watch, watch, watch. Don't move. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. You don't see it? No. Wait, yeah. I can also use okay, I'll take down defense. Look at my um, hands first, biomechanics takedown defense, because that is a hit, and it could break their structure, and that, or they can be coming in on a takedown as I'm fighting them with distracting hands, and that backhand can move their head around. Yes. This is very difficult stuff to pull off. Can you pull it off 100% of the time? Not necessarily. Can a higher level person like myself or Sensei Seagal or some hopefully brought 100 others around the world? They could. And I teach the concepts actually so you all can work on it. I even teach that towards the end of my DVD, some of the more advanced skills for people of all levels.
Change battery. Okay. Sensei Seagal said that there are. Th so now he says there's some good instructors like Fimio Demura and uh, who I was hoping to have on my podcast last summer, and he got sick right before it. And unfortunately, when I was doing ten of those podcasts, I did a great one with Kathy Long and uh, Viking Samurai and some other people. Uh, you guys should check out my playlist and my podcast playlist. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. I think I showed all my clips. And uh, anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy me doing these types of breakdowns. That's what I can do now that my knee had just had surgery. Check out my combatives of street jujitsu. Look, all five stars, 15 reviews, people from different levels, high level people from multiple martial arts. I think there's eight reviews over at um, effectivesofdefense.com, BJJ Fanatics. Go check that out. Let me know what you think of Sensei Steven Seagal as a martial artist, not necessarily as a person but as a martial artist, and do you think maybe there was a hit job against them, somewhat warranted, but now it's like so much and they still make them from all these big YouTube channels and movie channels and stuff. Why were they so against him? Um, it is interesting when there's so much against people, maybe it's, I don't know. But let me know what you think down below in the comments and uh, please subscribe and get my DVD and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you everybody, stay safe and have a wonderful day. Cheers.